CataractCoach.com. Highly myopic cataract surgery. Pearls for success in these challenging cases. And why is this IOL a meniscus design? So let's start off this case. This patient is very myopic. And this patient is going to get a very unusual lens. And that's a lens with a meniscus design. So starting off the case here, filling the anterior chamber with viscoelastic, we notice that, gosh, we use almost all of our syringe. That's because the anterior chamber volume is so high. We'll now shift our ring and make our phaco incision about 2.75 millimeters wide, and we're making it on the patient's steep axis of astigmatism. Now, with unusual power lenses, they don't make a toric lens in this patient's power. The lowest toric lens available for us in the U.S. is about a six diopter toric lens. And this patient is going to get an eye power that's lower than that. So we're poking the lens caps with our forceps, and you can see there's a little bit of laxity there. And so we finally get into it, and we're taking our time here to put a little more emphasis on getting that rexus just perfect. So there's no rush in this case. We gotta take our time and make it pretty. So here's our rexus. Now our forceps are marked off at two and a half and five millimeters from the tip. And we wanna ensure that we're gonna create that nice round five millimeter rexus. Don't just judge by the size of the pupil because this patient has a larger anterior segment and you may make too big of a capsule rexus. That looks just about perfect five millimeters. So bounce salt solution for some higher dissection here. Nice and easy. We don't want to try prolapse the nucleus out of the bag here. That rex is a little bit on the small side. And remember, this patient has not only a bigger corneal diameter, a bigger white to white measurement, but also a bigger lenticular diameter. So since the rex is that same five millimeter, you may not be able to get this nucleus prolapsed out. So don't try. So we've rotated the nucleus, put a little extra viscoelastic to protect that central cornea, and let's go with the phaco probe and the chopper, and let's see if we can just chop this nucleus right in the capsule bag. Probe going in to hold the nucleus, chopper goes in, and there are two halves, just that easy. Make sure those halves are fully separated, we can start to bring one up, and then we'll sub-chop it into smaller pieces. And these small pieces can then be emulsified quite easily, and this nucleus removal won't pose too much of an issue. Sometimes these patients can have that lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome, LIDRS, or as we say, the reverse pupillary block. In this patient, it's not too much of an issue. So we're getting the nuclear pieces now in front of the tip of the phaco probe, emulsifying those quite nicely. Important here, we want to avoid barotrauma or that means constantly inflating and deflating the eye because that may put some stress on the vitreous base and of course the retinal periphery. So now we have an epinuclear shell which we should be able to bring that up and just emulsify it and we'll clean this up quite nicely. In this patient as well, it's highly important that we're very gentle and we don't end up with a break in the posterior capsule. Posterior capsule break, will put any patient at a high risk for retinal detachment, retinal problems, but in a highly myopic patient, even more so. Do keep in mind also that all these patients are gonna have a shift in the vitreous. Remember, we're gonna take out a lens that's four or more millimeters thick and replace it with a thin man-made lens. So here comes that lens. Leading haptic should go in the eye like the number seven. There's that correct orientation. Good, and here comes the optic. We'll flip that over. Look at the lens now, look at the design. That's the meniscus design. So the meniscus design is necessary in very low powers. So either low positive powers or power on the low negative side. And that's a lens design feature. And that has to be calculated for differently. So a lot of the uh, more popular calculators, such as the Barrett or the Lattice, will take that into account. Also keep in mind that the A constant for a meniscus, a meniscus lens can be very different. Here's going behind the lens to remove viscoelastic. And for such a low power or negative power lens, you can see it has quite a thick design. 
Now removing the rest of that viscoelastic that was coating the corneal endothelium. This case looks really nice. Lens in beautiful position. You can see that Rex is overlapping the optic just right. We'll seal up our incision here. Don't let that anterior chamber deflate. Keep that lens in good position. Now, if you see a little wrinkle there on the posterior capsule, that's usually because the eye is a little underinflated or the caps are back slightly loose and those large haptics are putting a little pressure. So here, fortunately, they all kind of come out and the posterior capsule stays perfectly smooth when we inflate the eye to a normal pressure. I'm happy to tell you the patient had a beautiful result. And in addition, the patient saw the retina specialist in the post-op period to confirm that the retina is still nice and healthy. And congrats to our patient on the new vision. She is very happy with the outcome.